ओवर करंट रिले लैब टेस्टिंग एक्चुअली इन द लास्ट पावर वीडियो वी हैड सीन लैब टेस्टिंग ऑफ ओवर करंट रिले एंड व्हाट इज द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ द ओवर करंट रिले वेरियस सिटिंग्स विथ फार्मूला ऑपरेटिंग टाइम सी कट पॉइंट वन फोर होल डिवाइडेड बाय आई बाय आई एस होल पावर पॉइंट जीरो टू माइनस वन इनटू टीएमएस एंड टेकिंग द रीडिंग एंड टेस्टिंग द रीलिंग रिले एवरीथिंग वी हैव सीन इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू सी द ग्राफ दैट इस कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ द आईडीएमटी रिले एंड अदर वोल्टेज In that functions, these functions we are going to see in this video. Now, I, I, if, if you have the formula, you directly you can calculate the for values and put it in the table. Early days, they don't have the calculator, computer, and the etc. etc. They have only Slade rule or Clark table. Using that one, calculating the operating time of the relay up to two times, five times, ten times, twenty times is very difficult to do them. So they adopted another concept, a graph, that is characteristic plotting. Here you are seeing graph with in the x-axis current multiples of I s, in the y-axis operating time in terms of seconds. If this graph is a logarithmic scale that is not equal values logarithmic scale then it is easy to plot that characteristic see here at tm is equal to 1 they plotted the characteristic you see at the two times the current 10.03 seconds in the graph also two times current 10.03 seconds so it is easy to visual the graph And tell the operating time of the relay at particular point. That is two times, five times, ten times, twenty times. Don't need to calculate the operating time by formula. That is why they use it. Here it is. It is very useful to do the grading of the relay. That is, and also what is the operating time of the relay for a fault like that? They can do it. This graph only for TMS equal to one. Now we go for TMS equal to point one. This setting also is possible to set it in the relay. Here the T graph that is characteristic is come down the same two times of the current. The operating time is one point zero three seconds. Same five times of the current operating time is point two four two eight seconds. Ten times current point two nine seven seconds. Twenty nine current time point two two seven seconds. This graph is useful to the people to set the uh, TMS. Suppose if they want to set the, you calculated that the operating time is uh, some value. From that they calculate the TMS and put it in the relay. See now you see compare both the things. That is TMS equal to one, TMS point one. I cannot put it the operating time at point two, point eight like that. A lot of curves. This shifting will be there. That is a curve characteristic. Okay. Now one more thing. This is a definite independent time release instantaneous high set relay. What is definite independent time release? That is a you are setting a. The, the you are adopting a setting IS. If the current is more than IS, the relay will operate after the set time. In this relay, you have to set the current setting and also operating time setting. It is a fixed operating time that is set by the relay. Okay. If this operating time is less than hundred hundred milliseconds or equal to hundred milliseconds, this unit we are calling as instantaneous or high set relay. What is instantaneous or high set relay? If you are keeping the instantaneous, that is ten uh, milliseconds or twenty milliseconds of definite time, the relay will mall operate for a surge for three cycles. That is sixty milliseconds. Similarly, the relay operate and give the tripping command. It is not allowed. It is not advisable to keep the setting at sixty uh, milliseconds, uh, less than sixty milliseconds. So they set it at hundred milliseconds. Earlier days, the relay is. Uh, 
80 to 100 milliseconds. That is instantaneous high set relay. There is no setting in that relay. Early days. Now in the numeric relay or in the latest relays, you can set the definite time value, IS value and the time, IS value, what the value you want to set it, that value and the TS is a time setting. If it is less 100 milliseconds or less than 100 milliseconds, this unit you are calling as a instantaneous unit or high set relay. This high set relay operating value in terms of current only available. Okay, if you convert to the current setting with the reference to IDMT, that is I into IS. Suppose you are setting 5 ampere in the high set, that is instantaneous unit, and IS equal to 5 uh, 1 ampere. So, 5 times of the setting you are setting. 5 times of the IDMT relay setting you are setting in the high set. That is one of the important things here. Because if for grading and operating time measure everything, it is useful to you. Okay. Now, this is the connection of that uh, IDMT relay with the high set connections. The CTs are connected to three relays, ROIB phase relays or two relays and the neutral. Numerical relays means all the currents will pass to the unit and then you can set that relay. Over current and earth part relay like that. Here you see IDMT and high set parallelly connected. That is giving that a tripping command. If any IDMT relay operates, give that tripping command. Or the IDMT uh, high set is operated, operated. Suppose you are having a relay with some characteristic and give the relay in the less than high set current is passing to the relay. After the operating time, it will operate. If the current is more than high set, you set high set uh, operating unit setting. Immediately that relay will operate after the setting time. This is a connection diagram how that is connected IDMT relay and high set relay. Now characteristic of the high set unit that is if suppose you are setting the relay at 5 ampere. After the 5 ampere immediately the relay will operate. Set it 100 milliseconds means 100 milliseconds with the time delay it will operate. If it is less than the 5 ampere then high set unit will not operate. This is combined with IDMT. Combined with IDMT means uh, if the fault current is uh, two times or three times, uh, four times, uh, it will follow the IDMT curve. If the setting is high set is setting is uh, four ampere and IS equal to 0.8 ampere. Okay. Suppose the current is uh, more than four ampere, high set will operate and give the tripping command. IDMT will tend to operate. Once the tripping command goes to the breaker and open the breaker, current will be zero. IDMT relay will reset. It will not operate. It is given here. Okay. In terms of IS. Okay. Here see relay setting is 0.8 ampere. TM is equal to 1. I is equal to 4 ampere. That is equal to 5 times of IS. As per the characteristic, two times of the current uh, IS setting 10.03 seconds, uh, five times of the uh, setting current IS, it is 0 0.1 second, 10 times 0 0.1 seconds, 20 times 0 0.1 seconds. Uh, that is, four, if the current is more than 4 ampere, it is operating in 0 0.1 seconds. This IDMT and high set uh, is more useful for grading purpose. Any transformer or uh, inductance will be there, there you can adopt the high set and uh, uh, IDMT relay characteristic. Coordination is very easy using the high set and IDMT. Only IDMT is a relative problem. With the high set and uh, IDMT, it is useful, very easy to people to grade it. Okay. Now, voltage dependent IDMT protection relay. What is voltage protection IDMT relay? Here, settings are the highest setting you are setting in the relay. Once the voltage, see, early days, they face a problem. That is overload conditions. If the war, the relay should identify it is overload or fault conditions. So they have to use two relays for overload condition one relay and the IDM uh, fault condition one more relay. Okay. If the overload condition so combinedly they want to do it. So what they sense uh, identify voltage. If the fault voltage, the voltage is uh, less than uh, some 60 percent, uh, 80 percent or 90 percent of them, it will be considered as a fault. If the voltage is more than 90 percent, uh, it is considered as a overload conditions. So one relay they used as a overload identify overload protection 
and also as a fault uh, detection relay okay how they can achieve it so in this way there are one setting is that this setting is setting is changed to some other value it is a basic principle used in the voltage dependent idmp protection relay that is one curve is that this curve is changed to other value for odm overload conditions normal conditions the curve is in the shifted condition only if the voltage is less immediately it will come to other value now you see the characteristic of that one voltage dependent relay idm to relay this is connected with some pt supply and current also okay this full voltage is that the setting is some value is1 if the fault is that the setting is shifted to is2 in this relay normal overload condition setting is1 fault condition is2 voltage is setting in vs1 if the voltage vs1 greater the voltage is more than vs1 means normal condition that is uh, full load condition is there if the over current is there that is overloading the same voltage will be maintained it is overloaded conditions the voltage is less than vs1 means a fault condition example is1 circuit 1.2 ampere is2 circuit 0.8 ampere vs circuit of 60 volt if v is equal to 45 volt that is fault condition i is equal to 2.4 ampere the operating time is equal to 6.3 seconds that is three times of current is passing that is a setting is 0.8 current is 1.2 ampere 2.4 ampere sorry 2.4 ampere so three times of the fault current is passing to the relay it is consider the voltage is less than 60 volt is considered as a fault condition so what is happening the relay will operate in 6.3 seconds if the voltage is 62 volt that is more than your 60 volt okay it is a loaded conditions normal conditions in that condition suddenly the current is increased to 2.4 ampere that is two times of the is1 setting is1 is now is 1.12 ampere because the voltage is more than 60 volt the operating time is 10 seconds if the overload condition is persists more than 10 seconds the relay will operate it 10, 10 seconds and give the tipping command in the load current is coming to normal that is less than is2 less than your current setting it will be it will not operate so one relay is used for overload condition and also fault condition to tip the breaker this is called voltage dependent idmt reason cold load pickup what is a cold load pickup why the name is called cold load pickup Okay, before that one, I want to explain about the motor. Motor is initially in zero RPM. Once the supply is given, that zero motor rotate and come to its rated RPM. The time duration between zero RPM to rated RPM is called the starting time. The motor, initially, once switched on the motor, it will take high current. This current persists continuously during the starting time once the rated rpm is achieved the current is reduced to its full load current so this current is called starting current so now we understand what is the starting uh, time and what is the starting current full load current of the motor the motor there are two characteristics of the that is one is called cold load cold characteristic another is a hot characteristic that is a cold withstand characteristic of the motor hot withstand characteristic of the motor that means uh, once you started the motor that is the ideal for long time then you are starting that time it will withstand for more time that is a cold load that is cold characteristic cold stand characteristic that is uh, initially the temperature of the motor is ambient temperature once it started coming to the rated rpm the heating will be more and coming to temp temperature inside the motor so this characteristic we are calling as a cold withstand characteristic another one is hot withstand characteristic motor is running 
already some temperature is inside the motor some fault is coming or suddenly the heat is more it will stand for a certain duration only after that it will burn that characteristic that is running condition to withstand characterization that is uh, called the hot withstand characteristic for example the starting time made uh, during the starting time any fault comes uh, it is equal to your cold load characteristic if the running condition during the running condition any fault comes uh, it is called hot characteristic now this term cold load is coming from the cold characteristic okay now if you are charging a motor from a source that is the initial condition is cold condition that condition for more time that is cold condition say that is taking high current after the starting time it will come to normal current and full load condition during the starting time your relay should not trip that is the aim of the relay okay that is why this concept is given how the relay will sense that is motor here example is given motor motor starting current is equal to 4.8 ampere starting time is equal to 5 seconds full load current is equal to 0.8 ampere relay setting relay basic setting normal setting is equal to 0.8 ampere tms equal to 0.5 relay cold load setting is equal to 1.6 ampere tms equal to 1 cold time is equal to 10 seconds after closing breaker cold load auto initiated that time setting equal to setting is equal to 1.6 ampere tms equal to 1 for 10 seconds only it will proceed afterwards setting is changed to is equal to 0.8 ampere and tms equal to 0.5 ampere if breaker is closed and the motor is running relay will not operate during starting time the reason is full load current is no sorry starting current is 4.8 ampere setting is 1.6 ampere so three times of the setting current is passing operating time is equal to 6.3 seconds but starting time is 5 seconds that means starting time 5 second is less than operating time 6.3 seconds so the relay will not operate during the starting time after cold load time 10 second relay setting is changed to is equal to 0.8 ampere tms equal to 0.5 now the relay will operates for overload condition or fault condition example if the motor becomes standstill condition in that condition the fault current is equal to 4.8 ampere six times of is operating time is equal to 1.9 seconds if the it is low loaded that time also the it the relay will operate and trip the breaker now idmt relay characteristic where is type of idmt characteristic relay characteristics are available we are having two parts one part is called iec standard another part is ieee standard iec standard three iec relays are there one uk relay the general formula is given here t is equal to that is operating time is equal to beta whole divided by i i by is whole power alpha minus 1 plus l into tms plus c here l equal to 0 c c equal to 0 the first curve is standard inverse curve iec standard inverse curve beta is equal to 0.14 alpha is equal to 0.02 very inverse beta is equal to 13.5 alpha is equal to 1 extremely inverse beta is equal to 80 alpha is equal to 2 long time inverse uk curve beta is equal to 120 alpha is equal to 1 here the curve the characteristic is shown in the figure long time curve standard inverse very inverse and extremely inverse curve if you see in the curve standard inverse curve operating time up to four times is less compared to long time standard inverse and sorry very inverse and extreme inverse after four times the very inverse operating time and the extremely inverse operating time is less than standard inverse but the long time inverse is higher than your standard inverse curve next is ieee characteristic ieee characteristic moderately inverse very inverse extremely inverse 
inverse, short inverse like that will be there. Formula is a T operating time is equal to beta whole divided by I by beta divided by I by is power alpha minus 1 plus L whole into time dial plus C. Here C is equal to 0. So, moderately inverse beta is equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.0515 alpha is equal to 0 0.02, L is equal to 0 0.114, very inverse, beta is equal to 19.61, alpha is equal to 1 and L is equal to 0 0.491, extremely inverse, beta is equal to 28.2, alpha is equal to 2 and L is equal to 0 0.1217, inverse US curve, beta is equal to 5.95, alpha is equal to 2, L is equal to 0 0.18, Short time inverse beta equal to 0 0.16758, alpha is equal to 0 0.02, L is equal to 0 0.11858. Thank you very much for watching the video.